to open your Bibles, I'm, I'm going to share a word about keep on going forward. Because that's why I really believe that this season, like we're hearing from Prophet Jo here, and I know she's got a prophetic voice, that there's something here that, that, that's happening. It's, it's unbelievable the time we're living in the UK. How everything is changing and moving so fast is, is amazing. But we need to be very focused as the church. And I really believe that God wants us to do something specific. And as we open our Bibles in Philippians chapter 3, so that's a little bit about our history of our church, a little bit about us and we're going forward, and uh, I, I have four kids, uh, just before I forget, a 10-year-old, a 5-year-old, 4-year-old, and a 1-year-old. A um, you know, my, we started young, and we, we were wanting to build our 12 very quick. <laughs> One way or another, I'm going to build that 12. <laughs> my wife's like, that's it, no more. <laughs> I, I wanted five. I wanted the five-fold ministry. I said, like, I need, I need the whole team there. But uh, yeah, with, for, the, for the glory of God. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verses, uh, we're going to read from verse 13 onwards. And it says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal and the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Therefore, let us, as many are mature, have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. I ask for revelation, Lord. Father, I ask that your word be sown into the hearts, Lord, that you stir something for us to continue going forward, Lord. Father, for us to continue seeing your kingdom advance upon the earth, Lord. There is, this is a season, Lord, where you're moving us to take new territory. This is a time, Lord Father, where changes are happening, Lord, and we want to be in alignment with the Word of God, with your prophetic voice for this time, Lord, for your church, Lord. Raise up your church, Father. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I mean, here the Apostle Paul speaking to and, and writing to the church, one of the things we've got to do is let go sometimes, especially when you are successful, such as your church here. One of the, we've seen successes as well, and right, you're, you're ahead of us in this one, that you have your building and, you're, you know, and, you're, and you're the vision that Pastor Paul and Pastor Joe has for the network and for the building here is amazing. And when you have success, it's, it's something you, you tend to hold on and say, well, you know, I, I want to stay in this place. And I find that a lot with our leadership, especially those who've been with my father uh, as we're in transition. They, they like to go to the past and remember, remember those days when we did this, remember the days when we did that. And yet we want to hold on to the past, and yet God wants us to let go and go forward kind of like you know to move onwards and it's and especially when you see souls saved healings miracles when you see people being transformed it is great you know you want to celebrate yes definitely but you have to always press on there's more land to take there's more territories to go on and and one of the things even the apostle here saying to them you know there's this one thing I do I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand let go and forget what's behind you even the difficulties and the challenges kind of shaking off those things the pressures that the the enemy puts on us and you know sometimes I, 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 I we've got a rich history all of us even the the UK we think about the great revivals and the moves of God across this land and you you sometimes saying Lord you know do do it again what you did with John Wesley do it again what you did with Spurgeon but yet God is saying to us but I want to do something new with you what I did with them was great and fantastic for their time and season but what I'm doing I'm doing a new thing with you but to do that yes honor the past definitely we've got to honor what these these men, their foundation, the amazing work that they did, these women of God, but at, at the same time say, Lord, they, we're on their shoulders now looking further out and saying, Lord, what is that new area that you're taking at us? What is that new thing that you're wanting to do with us? So Paul was understanding, you know, the one thing I have to do is keep clear and focused, pursuing Christ, being intimate with him and obedient to his voice. And, and, and you know, faith is that thing, taking a risk, take, stepping out in that unknown and saying, will you do it, Lord? Here I stand. I'm, I'm trusting you, Lord, and I'm just going to step out. As, as we were just praying for people, and I had no idea. I really believed that God was going to do healing through other ministries and other. I didn't see it in, in my life. And then when, you know, moving in the signs and wonders, I'm like, okay, God, this is, this is you. you. You're wanting us to take on the new, move in that dimension and, and to see it. And, and the, for me, the greatest joy is to see the empowerment of other people, to see others doing it. When I see those, the, the, the young person and I see their eyes kind of going, Pastor, God used me to pray for someone and they got healed. I mean, amen. Man, that's it. That's, that's someone else being empowered. Tell the person next to you, be empowered in Christ. Empowered. So that, that's what God, God wants us. You know, and, and as um, 
We, we lose, you know, try not to lose that focus, you know. The word forget, it says that it's to lose out of the mind, to let go, to let go of awareness or for cease focusing on. That we have to stop thinking on that thing that, that, that's happened before and kind of go onwards. Kind of like say, Lord, this is it. You want me um, up, upwards and onwards. Don't live in the past successes. And when we see Paul, he was continuously thinking, Lord, what's the area? And the Macedonian call is, is an amazing one because he, his passion was, I'm going to go to Asia. I'm going to continue preaching the gospel to this area. And God says, I don't want you to preach there. It's a strange instruction, isn't it? That God says, don't preach in this area. You think that God will say, no, keep on preaching. But once you finish, they move to Macedonia. He, he had to be sensitive to the spirit of God and be connected to what the, the, the direction he wanted to do. And in the vision, he had the Macedonian call as a man. There was a vision of a man saying, come here and preach. But when you actually see him arrive to that area, he actually connects with a woman, a woman who was selling purple. And yet, you know, he, he understood, Lord, this is, your, this is the, the divine appointment. This is where you want me to go forward and that's what we have to be sensitive lord where where is it and you know when sometimes we're thinking lord you're going to do it this way you're going to do it that way you're going to bring the resources in this this manner and yet god has it in a completely different form but just being sensitive to him and saying lord i'm going to go in that direction i'm just going to i know that you said it and the lord spoke to us here that this is the place that we're supposed to be my wife and i you know i, I was born in peru my wife was born in ecuador but we made a decision in our point of our life we said lord we're going to love this nation as though it was ours we're going to give our hearts to it and put it in here be like Abraham and Sarah we're not exactly sure where we're going but we're going to love it with everything and just put in inside of it amen 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 and and that's you know our heart and we said Lord we're going to obey and go forward to the, what you're you're doing and to step you know taking those those steps of, of, of faith in Exodus just the verse there Exodus 14 15 you know the Lord saying why do you cry to me tell the children of Israel to go forward to go onwards. And sometimes it's like that. It's, it's that, that we, we want to remember, look, oh, but in, in Egypt it was better, or in this place it was better, or in my nation. And I, I have that uh, struggle with a lot of my, my members in my church. In Ecuador, in Colombia, we see this and this. And I said to him, look, brothers, you're here. Love the weather. Love the rain. Love the shine. Love everything about it. And, you know, you, know, it's, you hold him in your heart. And I believe this word, as you give into this land, the Lord will take care of the land back home. As you watch over here, the Lord will do things over there. And so, you know, getting them to love and to, to understand. You, you think about someone like Daniel. You know, he was in the Babylon. He wasn't even part of that government, that system or anything. Yet, you could see that God had him placed there specifically to change the destiny. Even the prophetic vision, we still speak of it today. Imagine that went through generations. Remember Dr. Bill Hammond. He's, a, he's also a great man of God. And I know he's, he's friends of the family here, isn't he? He's part of the, the ministry. And Dr. Bill Hammond, 14 years ago, came to our church before I was married. Well, just the year when I was married. And he gave one prophetic word. It was like two or three sentences at the long. And to this day, we live on that prophetic word with my wife. We just repeat that declaration when we declare it. And, just, and we see the fulfillment of that promise. He even prophesied how many children we would have. I mean, 14 years ago. And so he, he was, you know, a, a great man of God. And, and sometimes we have to kind of get that. Like Daniel had that prophecy for his nation, for that time, for Babylon. And yet for generations ahead for what God was going to do. There is a spiritual battle. And we, and we have to be the ones looking onwards and to see that another thing that the the word of God teaching there in, in the Philippians you know reaching forward to those things ahead that, that reaching forward means to stretch out to stretch forwards to change and grow is always in the stretch change and growth is always in the stretch so those of you who got, like to go to the gym you know you know that is that yeah pass the pool <laughs> there's that stretching and that growing that's that's that pushing forwards you know we, we, we have to have that mentality, and, I, and, and that's another challenge for the church always, that we don't get conditioned and, and staying and remaining in, in the ways that we think, but saying, Lord, you know, I want to be moving where you are. I want to be connected and, and flowing in the direction that you're doing, Lord, to be flexible. Tell the person next to you, be flexible. And you've got to stretch to be flexible. You've got to really kind of stretch out and say, Lord, you know, what is it that you're wanting to do? What is it that you're trying to do in this situation? You know, we, we've... Uh, We've seen a spiritual attacks as a ministry as well. We've seen things come. When you are in the cutting edge, when you're doing something that others don't do, 
There will be criticism. There will be those who, who like want, are pointing at you. Look what we're seeing even right now in our nation. Even right now as changes and transition, you see the voices and the negativity. And as, as we're moving into something new. But it is the church of God that has to rise up and be that prophetic voice in that voice. And declare what God says in that situation. Amen. Amen. We have to. We have to. We have to. You know, and, I, and I'm, you know, what, what are the areas that God wants you to grow personally? What are those areas that God wants you as a family to, to extend in? You know, we, we come and sit down as a ministry, but as a family, and we sit down around the table and we talk about our year, we talk about the ministry, we're saying, Lord, where are you taking us? What are we hearing? What is your word right now? Because we want to continue going forward. Because it's so easy to get trapped and, and, and fall into complacency and just say, oh, this, nothing's going to change. And <clears throat> we, we have to continuously reevaluate and say, Lord, Lord, I'm just, I know you're stretching us. You're bringing us out of this situation. In verse 14, he says, I press towards the goal for the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. You know, winning souls, getting the lost, empowering the, the, the new believers. You know, that's the passion in, in our hearts to see more of that happening. And when he says to press, it means to pursue, to flee, to follow after. Even, it even used, it's even used as the word to persecute. And it's like continuously, I'm not going to let go. That I've got this race in, ahead of me. I've got this course to complete. I've got to see this city change for Christ Jesus. I've got to see this nation transformed. And, and here's the challenge. Because Jesus said, go make disciples of nations. And sometimes we think discipling one person, yet God is wanting a nation. Look, look what happens when God speaks to Moses. And, uh, and Moses is uh, in that moment where the people are complaining about God and they're saying, oh, we want to return and, you know, that's it. And God says to Moses, Let's, let, let me, Moses, step out the side. Let me destroy this nation and let me raise up a new nation with you. And Moses gives an interesting conversation with God and he says to him, what will the other nations say about you? Because God's heart is for nations. Mo Even in that prayer, Moses is touching God's heart and saying, I want you to continue loving the nations. I still, you know, the heart of God was, was for nations. Abraham said, and I will make of you a great nation. And in you, all the nations, all the families of the earth will be blessed. See, churches that, this is the challenge. Islam has already discipled seven nations. When you think about it across the Middle East. Yet the church, how many nations is the church discipling at the moment? See, we have that challenge, and that, that's why the discipling is so important. That's why we have to see and look at the way God sees this and say, Lord, I, I, I want to catch your heart to disciple a nation. We, we, right now, our nation's being discipled in education, in government, in politics. It's being, it's being discipled in the media, these mountains that the enemy has hold of, and yet the church are very happy sometimes being in the religion mountain, in that area, and not stepping out and saying, Lord, how can we take over these other ones? Because that's how we disciple a nation. We don't disciple a nation just on the Sunday service here. And even if we have revival here, you've got to understand there are, there are people out there that won't step in, won't walk into this. And we, this is for us to fill the fire, yes. To be in the glory, yes. To soak in the present, yes. But the fire of God has to be out there taking those mountains, taking those areas, taking those spheres. So that's the challenge now. Because, you know, especially if you've grown up in a Pentecostal church, and I have, and you see that everyone wants a great service, that they want to feel the anointing, they want to make sure they get their miracle, that they see their blessing. Yet, the heart of pastors, and I know it's that heart of your pastors, is how do we take the media? How do we take, how do we take government? How do we take education? Because these are the ones that are taking and transforming our, our generation, our children, our youth. They're giving it. You know, the LGBT, they have their agenda. They've got their discipleship course. They've got their resources together, and they've got a vision and a goal. And, and sometimes we're arguing between ourselves about types of worship or types of doctrine and certain things that are, like, we can almost put to one area. I'm not saying the essential not the core beliefs but there are some things that we can say whether or not you speak in tongues whether or not you believe in signs wonder miracles but the, the, the you know if the church could walk in one faith and understand that we can disciple this nation and bring it for the glory of God that we can say once again the united kingdom is a Christian nation oh that would be powerful that's the heart of God that is the heart of God 
But listen, when you, when you get that, when you understand that the vision of God is, is for discipling a nation and using the, the, the people in the church, the enemy rises up. He fears that. But if you do a, a great service, and, and I see a lot of, we've seen a lot of great ministries that got great services. But when you disciple a nation, you know, heaven, hell releases its fury and it tries to come against you. But you've got to understand that there's that calling and that vision. Lord, I'm going forward. Lord, we're going to raise them up. Lord, we're going to, we're going to do, we're going to enter in all of these fears and, and take it for the glory of God. So be focused, be focused. You know, Hebrew says, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking to him, knowing that he is the one. Lord, you started this. You started, you built the church, Lord. You know, when Peter has that conversation with, with, with Jesus about the church, and he says, who am I? And, and everyone gives different types of information. You know, you're Elijah, or you're, you know, you're one of the old prophets, or you're John the Baptist. And then Peter says, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah. And, and you know, Jesus says, you know, heaven, you know, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And then he says, you know, and it gives him this, you know, the gates of Hell shall not prevail against the church. This revelation that Peter, what I, what I find interesting is that Peter gets this revelation before the cross, even before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He, he tapped into something of the supernatural, he tapped into God and had a revelation to build the church. Now we have the Holy Spirit. We have on the other side of the cross. And now we should be asking God, what's your revelation of Christ for the church so that we begin to take the gates of hell, that we begin to take position of different areas. That's got to be that thing. Uh, cool. We've now got to penetrate and break through that and say, Lord, what areas are you wanting us to do? I don't know how it is for you, but it, you know, we, 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 we cry for the streets of London. We, we, my wife and we, we sometimes have uh, all-night prayer meetings. I know you guys do the all-night prayer vigils or prayer meetings here. We also do it in different locations. We, we, we rent six different locations across the city for our network. And we sometimes have to cross over in different parts. I've got uh, one of our, our networks is in, in East, uh, East London. And so we, when we cross over the city, that's my wife. <laughs> she left the phone. So she, we, she, she, we have to cross over the, the city and we, we, we cry. We, we, we feel compassion. We feel the love of God for, for, for the city. We understand the need and the, the heartbreaking. And we say, Lord, there's so many areas that we have to still yet get, get the, you know, the, the film industry, the fashion. I'm right now in an area where our offices are in shortage. I've got a lot of hipsters around me. I've got a lot of the arts and, and creativity. And yet these guys are amazing. The, the ability that they have for art and design. And we're just you know, learning to start to communicate and share the gospel with them and show them that God, even with your talents and gifts, can be for the glory of God. That they, they, They're in that place to, to be used by God. You know, sometimes we're saying, Lord, come now, you know, the rapture, Lord Jesus, come. And, you know, we're asking for, you know, for him to take his church up. Yet I can see Jesus from above looking down and says, I'm waiting for the church to rise up. I'm waiting for the church to get up. I'm not just wanting to come and rapture you and get you out of this problem. I want the church to rise up and disciple and transform the nation. And that's our, our, the, 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 the vision we need to have. So guys, I, I'm, you know, thinking on this, brothers, and, you know, therefore, verse 15, Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. The prophetic voice for this nation. I really believe that, you know, we have seen it. The criticism, the gossip, the slander against the authorities, against the government, against the changes that are happening, even having stepped out of the EU, all these things that, are, that we, we, we hear the enemy trying to put something against it. But it is so important for us to rise up, speak and decree and declare that God wants to do it. And this is what the Lord said, and I'm hearing it prophetically from many different uh, uh, streams of the, of the church, that, th that this change that is happening in our in our time. We do not need experts or professionals. We don't need those guys who, who say they know how to because, listen, no one has ever done this before. We are entering new territory. But what we need is a pioneer and an exploring spirit because what we're going to take is new things for the glory of God. We need church that, that rises up with that spirit of, of that will say, We've got the ideas here. We know how to bring solution. We know how to bring the resources in here. We know how to bring in the networks here. That is the church has to speak that into this change and this transformation. We have to, you know, rise up and say, Lord, this is not, uh, this is not the end of the UK. This is the beginning of something great that we are going to see uh, as we begin to connect with new nations and begin to see 
financial and, and even resources from different parts of the world begin to connect because before there was an obstacle, but now God is going to bring that, that divine appointments and connections. But it happens with the church. You have to be, and I know there's businessmen and businesswomen and young people in this place. You have to have that pioneer spirit. You have to have that kind of, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to start that new, new business with my apps, a new business in, in, in the media, that new business in, in, the, in fashion, that new business in, the me- in every area that the Lord puts in your heart. And just say, I'm going to have that pioneer spirit. I'm going to step out and go to the front line. See, we, we should be the ones running into the battle. We should be the ones saying, that's it, I'm going to step in here, I'm going to go for it, because the, the reward is in the front lines. See, when David was still looking after sheep, he, no one knew about him. No one knew about his ministry. No one knew who he was. But the moment he beats Goliath, everything changes. The moment you overcome your fear, the moment you step out, everything changes. Victory comes. The, the reward is there for you. So, you know, you go from zero to hero in a moment when you step out in faith. I want you to stand in this place, please. As I want you to, to begin to declare and begin to rise up in your spirit. A declaration over the UK, a declaration over our youth, a declaration over the businesses. 